Former NFL player who has made a new career out of discussing topics that many people avoid, Emmanuel Acho is the host of webcast Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, as well as the host of the 25th season of The Bachelor. He's now out with a new book, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy, aimed at discussing systemic racism with a younger audience. Emmanuel, thank you so much for joining us today. The last time you were here, you were discussing your New York Times bestselling book, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Tell me what inspired you to tailor it now for younger readers. Yeah, Lindsay, I think that the, the crux of the issue in our society is really fixing the roots. And I look at it like this. If you wanted to change the trees of this world, you could pluck down the leaves, you could cut down the branches, but it's best that you actually address the root. And if we want to address the root of racism in our society, then it's best we start with the youth. Lindsay, when I was you know, 12, 13, 14, I often heard, Emmanuel, you don't even talk like you're black. Emmanuel, you don't even dress like you're black. Or Lindsay, Emmanuel, you're like an Oreo, black on the outside, white on the inside. So I grew up with an identity complex. It's not that my white counterparts, my white peers, were intentionally trying to be malicious, but they did not even know the power of their words. So I wanted to write uncomfortable conversations with a black boy to help equip those young white boys and those young white girls to help give parents the words to say to educate their children if they don't have the words themselves. Yeah, I must admit I heard those same uh, comments growing up as well. Uh, I, I'd actually like to ask you a question. It was it was posed on when we did a series recently called Soul of a Nation. There was a question that weekly would be, when was the first time that you realized you were black? Uh, I'd like to pose that question to you. That's a phenomenal question. Um, okay, we're going to go deep. There's a difference between color and culture, Lindsay. So I always knew I was black by skin color, but the dichotomy was I'm first generation American. My parents were born and raised in Nigeria. And so although I was black by skin color, I was cultured Nigerian, listening to Nigerian music, eating Nigerian food, going to Nigerian small groups. Then I'm immersed in white culture from grades five through 12 till I graduate. So I knew I was black by skin color, but I questioned my blackness because to be black at my private school was to be like Nelly circa 2002 without the eye patch, however. And so the first time I realized I was black or fully understood that I was okay being my own version of being black probably wasn't until I got to college. And so I imagine if you're talking about being in college, perhaps you were a teenager, what inside uh, this book, Uncom Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy, would have been most useful or instructive to you at that time? Everything. Um, if I can be honest, but let me be more honest. The book wouldn't have been as instructful for me as it would have been all of my non-black peers. The book would have been instructful for, instructive for me as a young black boy in the sense of reaffirming my identity, understanding the history of this country and understanding that by being born black, brown, um, that I am black and I am brown. I don't have to talk a certain way, dress a certain way, speak in a certain slang to be black. Uh, you write in your book, let me tell you what the movement for racial equality can't afford, white allies being fragile about racial issues. So a lot of people are going to see the book cover, uh, has a black boy on it. You're talking about uncover uncomfortable conversations with black boys, uh, people might not get that I think that your intended audience is for white people as much as it is for black people. Yeah, the intended audience is primarily for white people. It's primarily um, for people who are not of color. See, uncomfortable conversations with a black boy is simply saying, allow me to be this black boy to have a conversation with you. If you look at the back of the book, um, it's actually a picture of me when I was a child, and I have it here. It's actually, that's me when I was maybe 12 or 13, because now as an adult, I am equipped to have this dialogue. So let me enter into the 13-year-old mindset and communicate this conversation with you. And lastly, I recently did a story that involved someone who was essentially canceled for using the N-word. So many people responded on social media, basically asking if it's so painful, why do black people use the word? And why don't we all agree not to use this word? You address this in the book saying, no one should attempt to tell black people otherwise. Certainly this is a hot button issue for many. Can you explain why you might not agree with the white person who says, no one should use the word, period? 
I will try to talk about this complex concept very simply. Um, relationship dictates communication. Um, Lindsay, your significant other would speak to you in a manner that I should never and would never speak to you in the same manner that my significant other would speak to me in a manner that no one else should speak to me. I, I would submit that black people have a relationship based upon going through similar things that allows them to communicate in a certain way. With that being said, not all black people think alike. I spoke to Oprah one time at length, and she said she is repulsed by the N-word because that is oftentimes the last word that black boys and black girls heard before they were lynched, beaten, and murdered. So this is not a one-size-fits-all ideology or theory, but very simply, we all understand that in life, we can communicate with people differently based upon our relationship. Let's remember, we've lived in a society over the course of hundreds of years where white people in this country, generally speaking, have told black people what they can and cannot do. So if now in 2021, you are again trying to say you cannot use this word, which you all have reframed from the derogatory meaning to actually a term of endearment, it could be very reminiscent of the olden days in which for so long black people were being told what to do. Emmanuel Acho, uncomfortable conversations with a black boy available now wherever books are sold. We thank you so much for your time, Emmanuel. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.